Hey, what's up, guys? How you doing? It's me, Mr. 4K Upscaler. So, for those of you who have seen my video a week ago regarding Bob Lazar and Joe Rogan interview, uh, that video got a lot of attention. And as a matter of fact, as soon as you type in Joe Rogan and Bob Lazar, that video shows up right underneath. <laughs> so it's out there with the rest of the Bob Lazar videos and, and this famous Joe Rogan uh, podcast interview. So that video got a lot of attention, and it's growing. So a lot of people ask me, and they have been contacting me through uh, email. Uh, a lot of skeptics been contacting me and sending me video, and they've been telling me, hey, why do you jump on this bandwagon of uh, Bob Lazar? Why do you trust Bob Lazar, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I'm like, I don't jump into nobody's bandwagon unless I do my extensive research for quite a long time. So, for those of you who don't know, I have done a lot of research on Bob Lazar. I've been watching Bob Lazar VHS tapes since 1993. I've been reading a lot of his stuff by different uh, writers and publishers. I've been doing a bunch of research on Bob Lazar since 1990s till now. Just like I know about Al Bielik, and Philadelphia experiment that he was part of with the Eldridge Navy ship part of the experiment Philadelphia experiment uh, that has to do with the time travel also he was connected to Montauk project which is in Long Island north of uh, just the northern part of Long Island the edge of the northern part of the Long Island called the Montauk so there's a lot of stuff I do research on before I actually talk about it or before I even form my opinion. So for those of you who want to educate me about Bob Lazar, don't educate yourself. I know everything there is to know about Bob Lazar. For those of you who want to educate me about Philadelphia Experiment, the Eldridge uh, Navy ship and Montauk project in Long Island, don't. I've done extensive research on that as well. The whole point of this video is just to show you in a split screen fashion that the reason I believe Bob Lazar it's because since 1982 1989 interview that he did and till now 2019 with Joe Rogan interview and podcast he has given us the same exact story. His story never changed. It's exactly the same. I'm going to show you one example. Of course, you guys can do this for yourself. You can watch this 1989 video. And you can watch the jo jo Joe Rogan podcast. And you can put side by side both of these videos with Joe Rogan podcast and Bob Lazar 1989 interview. And you're going to see... It's exactly the same thing that he was saying. So he never changed his stance. He never changed his story. It has always been the same story. From Los Alamos, EG and G working there, then being recruited by the uh, S4 Match 12, Majestic 12, working at the S4. Everything, the briefings, and this is the one thing, the, the secret magic, Majestic's eyes only. The briefings, papers that he was given to, on the briefing, it, it clearly stated, while he was reading the briefing papers, it stated where these crafts are from, from which star system, etc., 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 the, the autopsy. So what I'm going to do first, I'm going to play the video from 1989 on the left side of the screen, so you guys can see it for yourself. And then once that's done, then I'm going to click on the right side of the video to show you exactly the same question that Joe Rogan asked about the briefing and you're gonna hear exactly the same story so here here we go files under what conditions did you gain access to them I was put into the briefing room with a hundred and twenty one or twenty two briefings and really was just told to sit and read through them I think they were there just to mainly educate me on, on what was going on. They weren't a complete in, 
in-depth explanation on everything else, but just uh, essentially a brief synopsis on some of the other projects that were going on there. Supposedly, the information, now this isn't something that I determined, it's something I was told, that uh, the crafts originated from uh, a planet that orbited the Zeta Reticuli star system, Zeta Reticuli 1 and Zeta Reticuli 2, or two, two stars of a binary star system. Uh, the craft allegedly came from there. One or two autopsy photographs I saw uh, dealt with just a small photograph, a bus shot essentially, just head, shoulders, and chest of an alien where the uh, uh, chest was cut open in a T fashion and one single organ was removed. Uh, the organ itself in the, in the other picture was uh, cut and vivisectioned essentially, the, uh, showing the different chambers in there. Uh, this was totally unrelated to anything I was doing. But from that photograph, it looked like what you see in UFO lore as the typical gray. So how tall it was from what I could see, I, I couldn't tell, because I only saw a portion of the photograph. But if everything else you see is correct, I would imagine it was three and a half or four feet tall. But uh, there again, you know, all I had to see was a photograph. And you know, I didn't have much to go on. Well all right, so on this side, we're going to click in the same exact question. This is in 2019. You're going to get exactly the same answer that, that Bob Lazar was giving on the interviews since 1989 till now. I right, um, explained it. And uh, so there was some paperwork that indicated that this was from the Zeta Reticuli star system. Now... Yeah. Now, right. how they obtained that, I haven't, I haven't the slightest idea. But it wasn't just from the Zeta Reticuli star system. It was what they called ZR3. So it was a third planet in that star system. So there was no other information about it other than that's supposedly where the craft came from. Now, is that true? I don't know. I have no way of verifying that. But that was printed in the same materials that referenced the reactor. Now, I looked that stuff up when I went home. And uh, Zeta Reticuli is a binary star, um, two stars that orbit, orbit one another. And it's only visible in the southern hemisphere, and it's about 30-some-odd light years away. So that's literally all the information I have about that. I don't know how they found out it came from there. And you also probably have some suspicions that they give you some disinformation like you were talking about before. Where they would, yeah. Yeah, to... I mean, if you ever decided to talk about this, they added a bunch of nonsense to make whatever is factual look ridiculous. Right. Or be able to trace it down. Like, okay, hey, this fax came out, and, you know, this Lazar guy said it had, you know, came from Zeta Reticuli, so they knew it was. When you me. read Zeta Reticuli, were you like, what in the fuck is this? Well, reading all of the stuff, it was, what right. in the fuck is this? You're like, why did I sign up for this? Like, what, no, no, what, it would, to, to me, this was cool. This right. was interesting. I said, I was just excited to be out in a secure area, you know, in the middle of the desert. I said, this right. is awesome. I How old are you it, at you the know? time? I get as in my 20s. Yes. So as you can see, you know... What was the incident in 1979 that brought the alien exchange program of information? So everything that you heard him say in 1989 and then him saying it today in 2019 interview it's exactly the same now I can spend two hours doing this side-by-side -side comparison from 1989 video to Joe Rogan video in 2019 or I can go back to uh, George Knapp interview I can go to 1984 I mean there's tons of comparisons I can put next to Joe Rogan interview that will give you exactly the same answer and same story so my whole point being here is for those of you who are skeptic look at this and you can do this for yourself you can watch this video 1989 and then watch the Joe Rogan podcast and you're gonna see or any video that he had done any interview that was conducted with Bob Lazar you're gonna see exactly the same story the story has never changed if he had changed his story and contradict himself many times then I can see some skeptics there but this here really it's difficult to 
uh, to dismiss. Just like when he talked about how these crafts operate, you know, they operate on the uh, gravitational va waves, gravitational waves, and they have to uh, pull themselves out on their backside and then face to that direction trajectory that they want to go. That's also mentioned here as well on this, uh, on both of these videos. Again, I don't have time to spend to be doing this and dissecting this side by side. I just showed you one example of that, but if you watch through both of these videos, you're going to see exactly that everything that he said in 1989, in contrast to 2019, it's exactly the same. Okay. So again, that's why I believe uh, Bob Lazar's story, you know, and on top of the research that I have done. Okay. So I have done a lot of research on this. Uh, this is not like my first rodeo watching his videos. You guys can do this yourself. Before I end this video, I'm not going to spend half an hour to an hour dissecting everything he said in 1989 and then putting it here in the contrast to uh, Joe Rogan podcast. You guys can do this yourself. You can watch both of these videos or any other video he has done, an interview, and you can see exact same comparison to the same story that he was given. There's no change of story. It's exactly the same. There's no contradictions, nothing. It's exactly the same. So that's why I believe him. Well, there you have it. I hope this clarifies some confusion about the, the critics out there of me stating that I'm just simply jumping onto a bandwagon and blindly believing everything uh, he said. No, it's you who's blind because you don't know my intelligence and, and how much I know. And how much research I have done. Okay. So please guys. I don't need you to educate me on Bob Lazar. I don't need you to educate me on the Eldridge. And, and Philadelphia Experiment. Montauk. I've done endless of research on all of these subjects. Okay. Well there you have it. Thank you uh, for watching this video. Cheers.